Yay! Yay! Hey, let's dive right in to see how we find the electric field from a point particle, or in this case, two of them. Um, I've got two point charges. Um, one is minus five nanocoulombs, the other one's plus three, so a minus charge and plus charge. For some reason, I've decided that minus charges are red, plus charges are green. I don't know why. It's just the way that it is. Um, so uh, what I want to do is find what the electric field at point P is due to these charges. Um, okay, so the first thing we have to do is write down how do you find an electric field from a point charge? You do it the exact same way every single time, and that is the electric field is... Okay, um, here's the way it's written in a lot of books. It's KQ over R squared R hat. All right, um, there's some value to this. Uh, KQ over R squared... Okay, R hat, that's the unit vector. Right, and the magnitude of a unit vector is one. That's why they call it a unit vector. So this kq over r squared, that's the magnitude of the electric field, um, which is fine. Sometimes, um, maybe in an example or two we'll do later, we're only interested in the magnitude of the electric field. So, so we can use that, kq over r squared. Um, but if we're trying to find the electric field from point charges, uh, a series of them, I think it's actually easier to do this. Remember, what is r hat? What is the definition of a unit vector? It's just a vector divided by its own length, right? Its own magnitude. So if I do that, if I take the, the r hat uh, and I plug in r vector over r, I get this. I just get another r in the denominator, a cube over r cubed, r vector, all right? So that is the thing that I really want to use. You might think it looks a little more complicated because there's now a cube thing in the denominator, but I don't really care because if I'm squaring something, can I cube it just as well? It's just it's just a different button on the calculator. And the advantage is that our vector is something usually we can just read off from the problem statement. So here's here's an example. Here's here's why I like to do it. Um, okay, if I'm going to find the electric field at P. Uh, remember what that means. I've got an electric field at this point due to the plus charge. So that's going up that way somehow. And then I got the electric field from the minus charge going towards the minus charge. So that's going to look like that, right? And so at a point in space, if I have two vectors, what does nature do? Uh, the easiest thing it could do, it just adds them together. So we're just going to add these vectors. So all I'm going to do is say that the electric field at P is just the electric field from the plus, and then I add the electric field from the minus, and then I'm done. I just add the two vectors. Um, if I add those two vectors, you can see what we're probably going to get, right? If I if I add these two vectors, I'm going to get something that's going to look like that. That should be the resultant, I don't know, down there somewhere. Um, okay, so let's, let's do it. Uh, this is going to be, uh, in other words, it's k q, whatever the plus charge is, divided by the distance from the plus charge cubed, and then the vector. And remember the convention. That r is the vector from the charge to the point I'm interested in. I'll probably say that um, 100 million times. So I got this, and then I'm going to do the other one, k. There's a whole bunch of little marks on these, but anyway, you know what it means. r minus cubed, and then the vector from the minus charge to the point p I'm interested in. Cool. So those are the two things I want to do, so let's write it out. So this is going to be, um, okay, what's our, our k? That's our, uh, remember, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Later on, when we do more electric field stuff, the epsilon naught is the constant that um, is really more fundamental. But k, it's just totally convenient. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is pretty close to 9 times 10 to the ninth. So that's just a really th easy number to stick into the calculator. So, so I'm going to do that. Uh, because watch what happens. I get 9 times 10 to the ninth. Uh, what is my q plus? It's 3. Nano coulombs, nano times 10 to the minus 9, right? So it looks like that. Uh, divided by the distance 
from the plus three up to point P. Okay, so that's three centimeters and then four. Well, that's going to be five, right? That's a three this distance. Yeah, that's a three, four, five triangle. So that's just going to be uh, five times 10 to the minus two cubed. All right, that's centimeters. So we got to keep all our measurements in meters. Uh, okay, and then times the vector. Okay, so here's here's the cool part. What is the vector from the charge, the plus three charge, to the point I'm interested in? Well, how do I get there? How do I get from the charge up to point P? I got to go to the left three centimeters. So it's minus 0.03. And then I got to go up four centimeters. So it's going to be plus 0.04. There we go. That's the vector. See what I mean? I can just write the vector down because I just look at the problem and I, I know what those things are. Um, the tricky part, just remember to always put your things in meters um, or else uh, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, uh, the next one, the minus one. Let's see if I have enough room for this. It's going to be minus because that Q is going to be minus 9 times 10 to the ninth. Uh, what is that? 5 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by what's that? What's that distance? Uh, 4 times 10 to the minus 2, 4 centimeters cubed. And then, oh, I think I can just fit it in over here. Uh, what is the vector from the minus 5 uh, charge up to the point P? What is it? I go up 0.4 centimeters. I don't do anything in the X. And I go 0.04 in the Y. Whoop, I just got it in there. All right. Um, cool. So now it's just a bunch of uh, plugging things into the calculator. But look, let's make it just a little bit easier. Um, this is why this number is so convenient, this K number. Look, I got up here, I got 10 to the ninth and 10 to the minus 9. Those exponents cancel out. Just gives me 1. So it's just going to be 27 over, uh, what's 5 cubed? 125. 10 to the minus 2 cubed, 10 to the minus 6. Times minus 0 0.03 and 0 0.04. Cool. Minus, uh, what's that? This is going to be 45, right? Um, divided by 4 cubed. What's that? That's like 64 times 10 to the minus 6. 0 0.04. Okay, cool. So this is just a little bit easier to stick in a calculator. Um, and it's boring to watch someone put things into a calculator. I've already done it. So uh, let's just write down um, what we get. So this means to multiply that vector times the number outside. Both components get multiplied. What do I get? I get like minus 6480. You can check me on this. 8640 minus... And then the other vector is 0, 20, 8, 1, 2, 5, something like that, with an obscene number of significant figures, right? I don't care. Um, okay, so this is going to get us, if we add these vectors together or subtract these vectors, it's going to be minus 6480 and then uh, minus 195. I don't know. I'll, I'll round a little bit. Okay, I'm not even putting units on it yet. Um, I mean, okay, I will. So the units are the electric field is newtons per coulomb. But on purpose, I haven't done electric forces yet. I always do fields before forces because I think it's really important to distinguish the two things. Um, so I'm just calculating vectors in space. I don't even care right now what the units are. It, it will happen to be newtons per coulomb. But I don't care. It's this technique um, of calculating this thing uh, that is really important to get down. So that's my electric field at point P. Let's look and see if it makes sense. That's a minus x and a minus y. It's reaching down into this third quadrant, so that looks about right. Uh, does it make sense that the y, the, the downward pointing y, is greater than the x? Yeah, that makes sense because that minus 5, look, that's a bigger charge and it's closer, right? So I expect that the field from that charge is going to dominate. So the overall electric field should point more towards it um, than away from the plus 3. Um, if you want, this is the vector. That's the electric field vector. If you want the magnitude and direction, remember how to do that. Um, the magnitude of the electric field, remember, if it's been a while, is just EX squared plus EY squared plus EZ squared if you're in three dimensions. And if you do this, uh, what did I get? I got like 20,500. And then the direction would be inverse tangent of ey over ex that gets you the angle with respect to the x-axis 
Uh, and when I did that, what did I get? 71.6. And this was, this points down in the third quadrant, right? And it's with respect to the X. So that's actually, we're gonna draw it up here. That's actually that angle. So what do I call that? South of West, I guess. Um, we could write it like that. Okay, neat. So um, we'll shorten this up as we do some more examples. Um, but this is how to find the electric field at a point um, due to a combination of point charges, um, if they're plus or minus. What if I had like five point charges? Um, well, I would just have five vectors to add together. So it's no more complicated, it's just more tedious. But this is how you do it. You just find the vector for each one, um, and then you add them up. Uh, and then you get a final vector. Um, and that's uh, literally all there is to it.